In this ImageQuantTL version 10 tutorial video, we will be performing a multi-channel gel or blot analysis with total protein load being used for normalization. Specifically, we will cover the following steps in the analysis workflow. Multiplex image creation, import into gel and blot analysis module, lane creation, background subtraction, band detection, molecular weight determination, normalization to total protein load on a separate channel, and finally exporting our results into Excel. Before we begin our analysis, we must create a multiplex image using the create multiplex function in the ImageQuantio version 10 main hub. From here, you can choose to browse and select the files that you would like to combine into your multiplex image. They must come from the same folder. Once chosen, you can choose to write the DS file, which stands for data set and then save this file into the same folder as your individual images. Now that we have generated our multiplex image, we can begin the analysis using the gel and blot analysis module. Once open, we can choose to open our image of interest using the open button here on the right side, and then select the DS file which was just generated. Now that we have it open, we can see that we can choose which channel is currently being displayed in the image window. For example, right now we have chosen the total protein load on this channel, which was generated using the Amersham Quick Stain Reagent. The other channel has our protein of interest. We can also choose to have them both displayed at the same time. Once we have them displayed, we can choose to adjust the contrast settings using the display button here at the top. We can see that we can adjust them independently from each other. For example, the red channel is our total protein load. We can adjust that by pulling up on our background to get rid of some of that background, as well as decrease that upper signal as well. We can also adjust our green channel, which has our protein of interest, the same way. We'll increase this to be able to get more visual resolution between my bands. We can also choose to display each of our channels with different colors using these pull downs here. I personally prefer the red and green shown here, but you can also choose any color that's in this display shown here. Now that we have our image adjusted appropriately, we can see the different displays that are available to us. For example, we have the 2D rendering up here in the top left, which shows us the image quality. Any saturation in the image would be shown with orange pixels. As you can see, there's no saturation in this image, so it is ideal for quantitation. To the right, we also have the 3D rendering of our image, where we can rotate to any orientation that we would like. If you'd like to save any of these images, you simply have to right-click and choose to save that file. Below this, we have the multiplex image, which displays the different channels and the signal coming from each one of those channels, respectively. Our next step in the analysis workflow is going to be creating our lanes. This process has been covered in detail in other videos, so I'm going to quickly go through it here. We can choose how many lanes that we would like. Start in one corner, click and drag to the opposite corner. In this case, we want to make sure that we are not including that die front at the bottom. You can then use the edit function here to adjust the four corners of our box to make sure it fits well. and then define any of our lanes that we need to. For example, I will choose lane one as my marker, as well as lane 14. Now that we've created our lanes, we can move on to the background subtraction step. Here in the background subtraction step, for this type of image, I prefer to do a separate background subtraction for my total protein normalization channel and my protein of interest channel. So we'll start first with our protein of interest channel, where I prefer to do a rolling ball background subtraction. And in this case, I will choose a radius of half of my lane length and apply that here. We can see that that was specifically applied to our protein of interest channel down here. Next, to do the background subtraction for our total protein normalization channel, I choose to just display that channel to more accurately show what I'm doing. And then from here, you could choose which type of background subtraction we would like to do. So in that case, I'm going to choose a rubber band, which is my preferred method. And you can apply that to just channel one, as shown here. Once you apply this, 
we could see how that background subtraction was applied, and we can make sure that that was very similar between all of our different lanes by choosing to display different lanes. So right now we're choosing lane 12, but we can look at the others and ensure we have similar background subtractions that have been done. The next step in the analysis workflow is going to be detecting our bands. For this type of analysis where we are doing a total protein normalization, there is no need to detect bands in the total protein normalization channel. This is because a normalization will be done using the total summed intensities of all pixels within each one of these lanes. Since this is the case, we can choose to display just our protein of interest channel. From here, you can choose to use the default parameters shown here, so you can choose to detect bands. And you can see this did a pretty good job at detecting our bands within the protein of interest channel. If you need to make changes to the detection parameters, you can do so up here. Most commonly, you have to adjust the minimum slope where if you detected too many bands, you can decrease sensitivity by increasing this value here. Or if you need to increase sensitivity, we can decrease our minimum slope by sliding this to the left. We can also manually edit the detected bands over here in the image. So I'll go ahead and quickly zoom in. And for example, if one of these bands needed to be deleted, you can simply right click on that band to delete it. And then to add that back in, we can do so either from the image or we can also do it from the intensity profile here as well. So we'll choose to display lane three where we just deleted that band. And you can add that band back in the intensity profile shown here. Now that we've detected our bands, we can move on to the molecular weight determination step. From here, you want to choose which channel has your molecular weight markers from this pull-down menu here. In our case, it's the channel with the total protein normalization. You also want to make sure that that same channel is selected here in this pull-down on the far right to determine which channel has your molecular weight markers. In this case, it is the Psi3 channel. Next, I like to adjust my display to make sure that I can see my molecular weight bands. So in this case, I will pull down my maximum in the contrast settings here to make sure that I can see them clearly in lane one and lane 14. Once we've adjusted our contrast, you can then go ahead and choose which marker that we are using from this list here. In our case, we're using the ECL Plex. If you don't have a marker that's in that list, you can go ahead and edit the molecular weight standard templates and add a new template here. Next, we can choose which lanes have our molecular weight markers. In this case, it's going to be lane 1 and lane 14. We can then manually add additional bands so you can physically see them here and simply click on them to make sure that they match between our different lanes. And to add additional markers, we can go back to lane 1, select the position there, same thing all the way down the lane. And then same thing in lane 14 and make sure that they line up well. Once you have all of your bands defined, we can then look over here at the curve fit along the far right, and we can see that the recommended fit for a power or aggression curve is not the best fit. From this pull down menu, we have many different that we could choose. And for example, log fit, and you can basically see how all these different types of fits work. That one looks like it fits fairly well. I typically recommend using the curve fit that fits your data the best. In this case, we'll stick with the exponential offset. We can now see that after we've done this, our curve fit has been applied to all of our bands of interest, and we can see the molecular weight of all of our bands here in this results window down below our image. Now that we've completed our molecular weight determination, we can readjust our contrast settings back to how it was before performing this step. We can also adjust our overlay to ensure that we are showing both of our channels. Once completed, we can move on to the normalization step in the analysis workflow. Once here, we can see that we have not applied a normalization yet, and we did not have normalized volumes for each one of our bands of interest. To perform a normalization, we first have to choose what method we'd like to use. In our case, it will be total protein. Next, you want to choose your reference channel. And this is going to be the channel that has your total protein normalization. In our case, it will be the Psi3 channel. 
Next, you want to choose your normalization factor denominator, which in our case will be total lane volume because we did not detect individual bands in our normalization channel. We can see that we now have normalized volumes for each one of our bands of interest. We can choose to copy and paste this into Excel, or we can move on to the results tab shown here. Once in the results tab, you can see that all of our band information is summarized in this table. You can choose what parameters that you'd like to have present in this table by checking different boxes here for these different parameters listed. For our analysis, the most relevant parameters are going to be volume and normalized volume for each one of our bands. Once you've chosen the parameters, we can then choose to export all of these results as a CSV, and then you can open into Excel to display your results.